and welcome to Shades in Justice. Hey, this is your host, Dr. Evelyn Hill, and you can always catch me at www.dr.evelynhill.net. Hey, we are super excited to have you join us on today. We have a um, different concern and another justice issue around sexual harassment that I haven't heard much on the news. I haven't heard much in social media, um, but this is a topic we are going to deal with today, sexual assault in transportation. So the injustices involved there and some of the things and tips that we can be aware of when we're using transportation outlets through our community. So who am I talking about? Uh, for uh, sexual assaults with transportation. I'm talking about organizations like Uber and Lyft. And there may be other organizations where individuals have an opportunity to gain employment by using these transportation opportunities. They can use their cars. Everything is supposed to be validated before they start that opportunity. But in the meantime, uh, so many people have been sexually assaulted using this uh, these transportation alternatives. So before we get started in all of that, let's look at a scripture. Let's look at Psalms chapter 140. Now listen to this. Rescue me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent. Who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. Rescue me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent who devise evil plans in their hearts. Okay, that was Psalm chapter 140, the first uh, couple of verses. And so I thought that verse was very adequate and uh, good for today because often those who use Uber and Lyft services don't imagine that people that are driving those vehicles have evil in their heart. But when you hear some of the information today, you will know absolutely that that is exactly what is happening. They have evil in their heart. And so let's talk about this subject about Uber drivers. Uh, and Lyft drivers and the injustices that occur when it comes to sexual assault. All right, so first of all, I got a email from someone uh, from a particular organization that said, hey, do you mind just taking a look at this article and maybe posting this on your website? And not only will I post it on my website, I will also share a lot of that information today with you from, those, from that individual that sent this to me. So it said that the Ride Sharing Sexual Assault Safety Guide. Cool, right? So here is this. So just gonna read a few things out of here uh, that I think are just key for you and I as we may think about using these services. In the past year, sharing apps have exploded in use and popularity. However, the ride sharing apps, okay? However, with the influx of this technology, ride sharing apps have created a perfect environment for sexual predators. I never even thought about this. So this is very good information, even for me, to prey on unassuming individuals. This comprehensive guide discusses prevalence of sexual assault in rideshare apps, lawsuits, and legal action against ride-sharing platforms and safety measures that Lyft and, and Uber passengers can take to avoid unwanted sexual contact. Okay, so that was part A. Here's part B, sexual why does ride share sexual assault happen? So according to this guy, 
ride sharing has become a very popular and safe way to avoid driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Unfortunately, when you're under the influence of drugs and alcohol, you become more vulnerable to sexual assault by a ride share driver or by a sexual predator posing as a ride share driver. Although ride share companies such as Lyft and Uber screen their applicants, criminal history and driving records, the screening process does not adequately eliminate all sexual predators. Furthermore, furthermore, some drivers do not receive adequate training about sexual assault, sexual misconduct, and sexual harassment. Additionally, most ride share companies have failed to implement essential safety protocols that are used by taxi drivers, such as passenger dividers and cameras. This has unfortunately led to reports of rape and sexual assaults by drivers of ride share and companies in recent years. So who knew that? I definitely didn't even know. So just think, most Uber and Lyft ride share drivers just use their own personal cars. And those personal cars are not uh, equipped with those uh, dividers in their vehicles or cameras unless the um, ride share driver chooses to put that in there. It would be better to make that a requirement, in my opinion. Uh, but it would, you know, Lyft and Uber could provide uh, uh, some type of interchangeable piece that could be put in the vehicles and a camera that could be put in the, in the vehicle so that both the rider and the ride share driver can be safe. These are protocols that can easily be put in place. So did you know that there is a huge amount of sexual assaults uh, done in Uber and Lyft? I was flabbergasted. I had no idea thousands of people had been sexually assaulted by these rideshare opportunities. Now get this, in 2019, a news story by National Public Radio, a new report showed that Uber received over 6,000 assault claims in the past two years. 6,000? Whoa. In its first safety report update released in December 2019, Uber noted that it had reports of 3,045 sexual assaults, get this, nine murders and 58 crashes in rides in the United States in 2018. Oh my, Three th over 3,000 sexual assaults, nine murders? Whoa, this is, this needs our attention, and 58 crashes. Victims included both passengers and drivers. Also, the reported numbers are probably lower than the actual numbers because victims often do not report sexual assaults. And you and I know that, and we've mentioned that on several other of our um, podcasts and radio shows. So this is pretty phenomenal information. So, hey, for you ladies and gentlemen out there, be careful about these rideshare opportunities. I've got some tips for you in, in just a few minutes. Here's some more st statistics about victims uh, in this rideshare environment. After Uber released this report, the California Public Utilities Commission fined Uber $59 million for refusing to share the names and contact information of victims 
of the 3,000 reported sexual assaults due to various privacy concerns. However, in July 2021, under a preliminary agreement, Uber, Uber I'm sorry, negotiated the fine down to 150,000 under the agreement. Uber is not required to give victims' names to the commission, but agrees to give out anonymous data about Uber sexual assaults on its website. So you and I need to go to Uber and check out that website. The preliminary agreement also requires Uber to donate $4 million to California Victim Compensation Board and donate another $5 million to address sexual assault and safety concerns in the ride sharing industry. Absolutely amazing information. The agreement would also allow Uber riders to opt in to be in contact by California law enforcement when they report a sexual assault. The opt-in feature would apply to all ride share companies. Wow, this is huge. This problem is so prevalent that in California and I, I'm sure in many other states in our nation that they are now agreeing to put in $5 million to address sexual assaults and concerns in the ride sharing industry. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, especially you ladies, let's be careful when using Uber and Lyft. And like I said, in just a minute, we're going to give you some tips. And when I give you these tips, I want you to get pencil and paper, write some of this stuff down, or either copy this uh, information from our uh, website and make sure you use some of these tips when you are uh, using some of these ride share uh, opportunities. So here we go. Uh, despite, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start here. In March 2021, if blame the delay on victims' privacy issue because Uber and the California Public Utilities Commission. Lyft also stated that the company is waiting on government traffic fatality data to be released before releasing its report. Interesting. Meanwhile, at least 72 Lyft passengers have filed lawsuits against the ride sharing company based on this negligent handling of reports of sexual assault and rape, and with some cases claiming that Lyft knew that some of its drivers were sexually assaulting passengers, but did nothing to stop it. Okay, ladies. <laughs> okay, this, this garners our attention. Lyft knew they had sexual uh, predators as part of their team and did nothing about it. So we have to be very careful. Okay, here we go. Here are tips to help you stay safe and reduce sexual assaults in Uber and Lyfts. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's our first tip. Uh, Uber safety tips include waiting inside a safe place until your ride shows up. That's very interesting because I've seen many uh, individuals just standing outside, uh, not necessarily in a uh, safe environment, but waiting on Uber or Lyft to pick them up. All right. So that's one thing. Make sure you're waiting inside in a safe place until your ride shows up. Here's another tip. Make sure that the rider's information on Uber matches the person who has arrived before you get into the vehicle, including the car's make and model and license plate. So I remember a uh, uh, time when my family and I were in a certain city 
and we were trying to get Uber services for uh, two of our younger uh, family members who at the time knew very little about Uber. And I must admit, I didn't know much about Uber myself. And we never even considered to check out the person who arrived or to make sure that the make and model of the vehicle was the same as what was on the app, the Uber app. So I want to encourage you to do that. All right, number three, ask the driver to confirm your name before getting into the vehicle. This is excellent. Not you ask for their name, but you ask them, what is my name? Before you even get in, so to make sure they know that they have the right person and you know that they are expecting you. And this is a good check for them also. Okay. Always, always, always ride in the back seat. Don't get in the front seat, get in the back seat. Now, I myself, I'm about six foot tall. Uh, usually the front seat is much more comfortable for me. Uh, but if I'm getting in the Uber, I would make sure to get in the back seat. I want to encourage you all, make sure you get in the back seat. And there's no one else in there in the front seat, okay? Except the driver. Sharing your travel plans with a friend or family member is good. So when you get into the Uber or Lyft transportation vehicle, make sure somebody in your family or friend knows that you're doing that, knows where you're going, knows when your approximate arrival time is and check back with them uh, after you get there to make sure you are safe. Now get listen to this one, women, because women are more likely to be victims of sexual assault than men. There are some essential steps that women should take to protect themselves and other women. First, pay attention to your friend's clues. Notice whether they look uncomfortable and ask them if they're all right. Next, if you see anyone acting aggressively towards a woman, notify the police or call security immediately. Number nine, if you're going out with a group of women, stick together, ladies, and employ a buddy system. Make a plan with others in advance about how long you will stay out and whether someone will be going home early. Always make sure that anyone who leaves first leaves safely. Walk them to the ride share and make sure they're getting into the right car, especially if they are intoxicated. Ensure the make and model and license plate and the driver's photo match the information on the Uber or Lyft app. Tell your friend to text or give you a call to let you know they've arrived home safely. That buddy system is awesome. That buddy system tip is worth its weight in gold and so much more. That leaves a really safe environment for the ladies leaving early, the ladies leaving late, those who are intoxicated. Um, man, it's always better not to be intoxicated, not to be influenced by drugs, but in the event you are, please employ that buddy system. It goes a long way. Listen to this above all. It's imperative to trust your gut with any potential safety incident. Other intuitions, no, our intuitions are very powerful and often accurate. If you sense danger in any way, do not get in the car. Did you all hear that? If you sense danger in any way, do not get in the car. All right. Do not get in the car. Do not let your friend get in the car. Trust your gut. This is imperative for your safety. All right. What does Lyft and Uber do? Is it enough? All right, so let's talk about this for just a little bit. 
when accepting Lyft or Uber rides, passengers trust that rideshare companies have done thorough background checks on the drivers by confirming their identity and personal information through driver's license and real-time photos, and they perform criminal background checks before contracting a driver for work. Background searches includes a nationwide search of county court records, federal criminal records, and sex offender registries. Rideshare companies also monitor drivers on an annual basis for new criminal and driving offenses. In addition, rideshare companies have their in-app safety services. Lyft service has an in-app safety feature, including a feature in which riders can share their location with friends and family. Riders can also connect with an ADT security professional through texting or calling. The ADT safety professional can take the important step of silently alerting 911 and sharing the driver's location with the police. Lyft also has a 24 hour critical response line which Lyft drivers and riders can use to report incidents of physical injuries, incident, I'm sorry, indecent exposure and serious sexual assaults. Very similar to Lyft, Uber has a in-app emergency button. That's so important and a safety toolkit which contacts 911. The app shows the rider's location, vehicle information, and license plate number, which 911 services can then use to locate the vehicle. Now, here's the thing. I appreciate this app so much, but if you are a senior citizen, you might need to study that whole app process before even uh, getting into the vehicle. So take time out to train yourself on these apps and learn um, how you can keep yourself safe, uh, especially senior citizens or those who are technically uh, challenged. Now, however, the fact that sexual assault statistics are high, despite the screening, means that there is much room for improvement. In some lawsuits brought against Uber and Lyft, alleged victims have argued that the company's background screening procedures are inadequate and done at a minimal cost, resulting in the company's failure to screen out sexual predators. So see, we have to do our own homework. Where we can, let's be safe. I would suggest you know, riding together with a friend. Don't even get in an Uber by yourself. I know it sounds kind of crazy coming from um, someone um, who is living in the 21st century. You can't always have friends and family ride with you, but just as an extra safety uh, opportunity, that's what I would recommend when you can get someone to ride with you. Uh, In-app safety features such as the ADT feature only protect against assaults if help arrives quickly before the assault occurs. Seriously? Before the assault occurs? So that is really challenging for me because if you're in a location that's hard to get to from the police and others and ADD, ATT, ADT security can't get to you quickly before the assault actually happens, then that's a problem. And then uh, I understand why people are filing suit against uh, Uber and Lyft. Okay. 
here's some opportunities where they could still improve. Steel rideshare companies could further improve their safety by taking several measures. First, they could improve safety by requiring drivers to install dividers between the front and back seats to decrease the risk of physical assaults by both drivers and passengers. We talked about that earlier. Uh, could, uh, they could also require drivers to keep cameras in the car. We talked about that earlier. And rideshare companies can also take more action on reported assaults, including being more transparent in disclosing assault statistics. Uh, so these are things that can still be done. I want to just, I got just a few minutes left here. Um, I want to encourage students, safety for students. Unfortunately, because the sheer volume of riders and the fact that young people tend to binge drink and use drugs more than older people, college students and particularly women are especially susceptible to being sexually assaulted while ride sharing. In April 2021, an Uber driver was sentenced to more than 50 years in prison after being found guilty of rape, sexual assault, and grand theft charges. Between July 2017 and January 2018, Alfonso Al Alarcaz Nunes preyed on and assaulted five women, four of which were college students in San Luis Obispo area. Alarcon Nunes would target intoxicated female riders and sexually assault them, stealing their valuables and then charging them excessive fees for the ride sharing. Boy, this guy needed to be put in jail. Many college students contact a ride sharing company late at night after they've been drinking alcohol. So their judgment and situational awareness are reduced. In this state, they may be more susceptible to getting into a car without first making sure it is a legitimate Uber or Lyft driver. Sexual predators know this, so they often pose as Uber or Lyft drivers and frequent college campuses searching for victims. Hey, parents, be sure and tell your college students this information. Uh, some are freshmen this year going in. This is the beginning of a new uh, school year. Uh, so many college students have been assaulted over the years. Maybe your daughter is next in line, but at least arm them with this information. Uber and Lyft drivers and frequent college campus searching for victims. In a horrific story from 2019, police report a University of South Carolina student left a bar in Columbia, South Carolina at 2 a.m., got into a car with someone she thought was an Uber driver. She was found murdered the next day. The suspect, Nathaniel Rowland, was charged with kidnapping, murder, and possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime. His criminal case began in July 2021. So these are some things. These are definitely some opportunities for you and I to check out about the injustice of Uber and Lyft drivers and what they have done as far as sexual assaulting young women and men uh, in the past. And it even goes on further. Uh, this is an excellent article. We will, you will find this uh, on my website in the coming weeks. Again, this is Dr. Evelyn Hill at www.drevelynhill.net. Today, we talked about the sexual assaults happening with Uber and Lyft transportation services. We've given you several tips.
to use, uh, which included uh, opportunities that might keep you safe. Uh, so um, again, we look forward to seeing you again at our next Shades in Justice. All right, have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.